So these properties of the old pass can now be used to warp the frequency scale of a filter by effectively replacing e to the power of j capital omega to e to the power of j a function of capital omega in our frequency response. So for instance, we can map it according to the so-called Park scale that is widely used in psychoacoustics. So a common approximation of the Park scale is given by this equation here. We have these arc tons here, uh, numbers. So this uh, F is the frequency in Hertz. So the Park scale can be seen as an approximation of the change in frequency resolution over frequency of the inner ear filters of the human ear's cochlea. So because of the structure of our cochlea, the ear has different sensitivities for different frequencies and different signals. So the signal-dependent threshold of audibility of the ear is called the masking threshold. It has more spectral detail at lower than at higher frequencies according to the bark scale. So we can plot this bark formula in Python. So here we are defining some in your space from 0 to 20,000 in steps of 1,000 and we are computing the uh, Zwicker's uh, Bark approximation formula so we are defining this formula here in Python and then we are plotting Bark over Hertz so here we have the frequency in Hertz and here we have the equivalent of frequencies in Bark so here we can see that the one Bark at lower frequency has much more lower bandwidth than at higher frequencies. If we take one bark in the lower frequencies, the bandwidth is much higher than if we take one bark in the higher frequency. So this means the ear can be seen as having a higher frequency resolution at lower frequencies than at higher frequencies. So imagine we want to design a filter or a system for hearing purposes for instance, and we would like to model the masking threshold of the ear for any given signal by some linear filter, FIR or IIR. So then it would be useful to give this filter a higher frequency resolution at lower frequencies such that it matches the smaller details of the masking threshold at the lower frequencies. The thing is that if we look at the usual design methods, they distribute the filter details independent of the frequency range. So for instance, what we saw with the Remes method, uh, where we have equally distributed ripples. So here we can now use frequency warping such that we enlarge the lower frequency range and we shrink the high frequency range accordingly, such that our filter now works on the warped frequency and sees the lower frequencies more detail. The lower frequencies are more spread out in comparison to the higher frequencies.